This is Raj Chau. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my show. This video is of great importance, of profound importance because it is directly linked to our salvation per Jesus Christ. Okay, the author of our salvation is Jesus. So what we are going to share or discuss is the wheat and the tares. That's the uh, he gave that story of the parable of wheat and tares for a reason because he used it on the day of judgment guys it's extremely important i would recommend you uh, stop whatever you're doing or choose a convenient time to view this video it's of great importance because whatever we do here like solomon says is meaningless it is useless it is just occupying our time and in the whole process the father or the lord god expected us to grow in wisdom, in righteousness, in love and compassion and in truth. Now, this is why this so-called contraption of earth was made. It's like a university. But some will pass, some will fail as typically happens on the last day. That's the day when the results are announced, where everybody is trembling, shaking, all the students who have worked very hard, some have not. Some followed the rules, studied and stuff like that and practiced what was taught. Somebody, some people didn't and they failed. So be careful guys, this will, they can come back for a second chance. We don't have a second chance. That's the difference. That's the crucial difference between university results and our result on the day of judgment. So here with rapt attention, this concerns our eternal salvation. Where do we land up after it's all done? This game is over because it will be destroyed as it is this world. Don't pin hopes on this. It's a foregone failure, a foregone conclusion that this planet earth will be destroyed by Father God because of the sin. It is infected with sin. It's like a last stage HIV or cancer struck patient. It, the only thing that they can hope for is a quicker death to relieve them. This is what's happening to this earth at this stage. It's just fraught with uh, sin and transgressions. So guys, uh, I will be reading out to you the parable which Jesus explained to us and then we will uh, try to break it down, okay? Jesus put forth a parable to them in Matthew 13, 24 to 30. I'll read it out, guys. Keep that in mind. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while the man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared because they were also sowed along with the wheat. So the servant of the owner came and said to him, Sir, do you not, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He was kind of puzzled. He was befuddled. He said to them, an enemy has done this. This is what Jesus told or Jesus is narrating this tale. The master is also Jesus or Father God. It's almost the same thing, isn't it? So the master said, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, no. Well, they wanted to pluck out and throw away the weeds, right? Or the tares. But he said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. That's the love of God for us. That's why he's allowing the wicked. Because he's going to, if what he's saying is, if I clear out everything, the good guys will also go. He doesn't want to lose one righteous soul. That is the wheat. That's what he's looking for. We'll come to know a lot through this parable and why it was used and when it was used on the day of judgment. Whether it was used or not, beg your pardon. It was. Let both the wheat and the tares grow together until the harvest. That's the day of judgment. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first, gather together tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. The ones who don't qualify to be wheat will be deemed as tares and their destination is or their fate or destiny is what? Getting burned. But gather the wheat and take it into my barn, heaven. Okay. Now, Jesus explains that 
when they asked him lord lord what the apostles or the disciples what did you mean by this he jesus answered to them this is in uh, matthew 13 37 43 just a little uh, below that you know we read uh, i'll tell you 13 24 30 and this he answers them just a little few verses below that 13 37 to 43 matthew matthew by the way is the best gospel in the in the new testament followed by john and then the other two he answered and said to them he who sows the good seed is the son of man jesus answered them and he explains he who sows the good seed is the son of man jesus there you go jesus is the master the field is the world this whole world which is heavily infected with sin right now ready to be burned up and destroyed by the all consuming fire of god the field is the world the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom who will inherit his kingdom who will become part of god's family it's good huh? it's great it's a good incentive guys to own jointly own the universe this is the advantage of being born in the likeness of god in his uh, image and likeness but we are under a covenant if you then i shall if you do this then i shall never forget we are under a covenant which poly paul the false apostle twisted and replaced with grace which is the opposite of covenant i have highlighted this in one of my videos grace is a word jesus didn't use and this is the reason it is the bare opposite of a covenant which is a contract between at least two parties with joint responsibilities i mean with responsible responsibilities and obligations but not grace it's the opposite and that's why poly did it he wanted to destroy god's covenant going further the field is the world the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom but the tares are the sons of the wicked one which he highlights in uh, uh, points out in john 8:44 he called the pharisees you sons of devil this is the reason they were tares ready to be torn apart torn apart by these jesus were ready to tear the tares on the last day yes and he did the enemy who sowed them is the devil right so there are a lot of evil people on earth but we have to practice loving compassion save yourself protect yourself from them but don't judge them practice loving kindness maybe one of them changes their heart god will bless you for us or me you means you and me the enemy who sowed them is the devil the harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels therefore as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire so it will be at the end of this age the son of man will send out his angels and they will and they will gather out his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire so here you go if you don't obey the law you are done like paul wanted us to be done so he said the law is dead you are it's dead like a widow and this you're not under law you're under grace because of this he wanted us to be lawlessness so that we are burnt on the last day paul's major and one point agenda was that we should be condemned the children of god and the potential children of god because all are right now all are till this happens all are potentially the children of god but those who practice who obeyed the father and practice righteousness in everything those are invited and will be will read that they'll be thrown into the uh, and cast into the furnace of fire that's the lake of fire we know that right that's where they will end up whoever is lawless or didn't obey father god's eternal magnificent law as david says 119 psalms 119 read that guys psalms 197 to 11 i don't want to keep expanding it will go to one hour i want to finish it about 22 minutes i kept that as a like the uh, final you know cut off point for all my videos from now there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of the father he who has ears let them hear jesus ends with this so it's pretty clear i don't want to expound on that now you have this or we have this um, story the parable of wheat and the tares now let's go to the last days guys and see how it played out see the the beauty of a bible a book 
is it tells you word by word what has happened. There's no suspense in Bible. Nothing left to chance or speculation. Now we will read how it played out. It's like a complete and a beautiful book written by an ace author. And what are humans compared to the ace author? Christ Jesus, Father God or the Holy Spirit. Who, they, are, they are one, you know. One in essence who wrote the, Holy Spirit, uh, the Bible. Let's go to the final day, judgment scenario and see what happened. Did wheat and tears take place? Yes, it did. So where is it? First, I will read Revelation 20, 11, 15. Quickly for you. And then follow it up with Matthew 25, 31, 46. These are two vivid accounts of the judgment day events. And I will leave it to your understanding, your wisdom. How, what do you make of it? All right. It's interesting. Let's jump, go straight there. Start with uh, Revelation 20, 11, 15. I don't have time beyond 22 minutes. That's my cutoff. Discipline, discipline. Or Sahu can speak and speak and speak. <laughs> The judgment of the dead. Then I saw a great white throne. This is John speaking, Apostle John, when he was whisked up to uh, heaven where he saw all this happening. So he could give us the rebel book of Revelation. This is by the, uh, by the apostle who was handpicked by Jesus, not like Polly who claimed to be an apostle. Jesus never uttered the word apostle and never uttered the word grace, which he taught this bloody fake apostle. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it, right, Father God. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence. It did. Everything is terrified by the, uh, that's why we should be terrified also. Don't just fear God, be in terror. That's righteous terror I'm talking about. No, not evil terror. Be terrified of God, be fearful so we do not sin. That is the reason he wants us to fear God. Because he wants us to know that he is in no position to help us if we continue to live in sin. Alright. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. Now everybody is lined up. Envision that guys. Think about all of us in soul, in spirit lining up. Hmm. Flesh is not allowed in his presence. It's too, too uh, evil and sinful to be. Anything which is... Uh, Sinful will be burnt there and there if the Lord's eyes look at that. Because he is very holy and he practices only righteousness. He is a very righteous and holy means pure, pure, pure. So we will be in spirit which is purer than the body. And I saw the dead great and small standing before the throne and books were opened. Books were opened guys. Huh? Another book was opened which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. So, they were judged according to what they had done. We are, everything we do is being recorded. Okay, guys? So, it's obviously works. It's a works-based salvation. All right? All this was nonsense, utter lies, deceptions, and heresy of Paul that said by grace alone, through faith alone, nothing of that sort was used. What you had done will come out and based on your works of good, bad, and ugly works, we will be judged. All right? That's why it's Hyper important, ultra important, crucial to practice righteousness in everything. All right. What is righteousness? Do the right things right away. What is so hard? It's the most wonderful things ever. We just have to practice it. So it becomes a second nature to us. That's what God is looking for. That a person is full of righteousness, who speaks truth, whose heart is filled with love and compassion. That's all that's needed. Who makes righteous decisions in all choices that he is or she is facing. Right. That's all there is. So guys think about all that. Okay. The sea gave up the dead that were in it. The death and the Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. So everybody is getting judged for what they had done. No, not a word of faith. <laughs> faith is uh, conspicuous by its absence here. <laughs> that uh, criteria of faith was not there. Job of faith is to take us to good works and James explains it beautifully three times in James 2. Faith is dead without good works. He warned us, he kind of punched us so we are shaken out of our trance. Appalling deception, alright. Faith is dead without good work. And that's what my friend, uh, I believe his name is Joseph from Chile, he highlights. Polly was serving us dead faith. 
You have to take this dead faith and die on the last day. That was his intention. It is getting more and more clear. I hope you get it. I am not going to stress beyond that. Then death and Hades were thrown open into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Even Father God got rid of death and Hades. So who were saved on the last day will never ever ever die. But unfortunately who didn't obey the Lord God were put there in the lake of fire. It's going to be a tough judgment, guys. Prepare yourself for it. But don't get scared. If you're practicing righteousness, you're practicing loving compassion, you have nothing to uh, fear. However, you have everything to fear if you're not. If you're relying on faith alone, faith alone, grace alone. Grace is the opposite of covenant. I am the man who exposed this to the Christian world. And this is what the Lord God gave me. Not that I'm smart. I'm the least of you all. He told me, beta, beta means a child, this is the opposite of my covenant. How dare you teach grace? You means the Christian people, uh, teachers in the churches. How dare? That's why he called it a synagogue of devil. That's why where we have become. We teach the Antichrist. Antichrist is Paul. I put videos on that. Antichrist name revealed. It was Paul. Or the damning confessions of the false apostle Paul where I have compiled 30, 40 of his bloody uh, confessions, what he talked about himself, what he was. They are there, guys, okay? Have a look at them. So this is the, uh, anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. So whose name was there, whose name? Now that we will understand by reading Matthew 25, 31, 46, the, where the wheat and tares took place. He read the wheat, wheat and tear. Uh, parable. Now we are going to judgment which is partly explaining what happened. When we read Matthew 25 31 46 we get a clear and full understanding and I hope it will help us all. Let's go to Matthew 25 31 46. I'll read it out for you. Let's read Matthew 25 31 46. Judgment of the nations. It gives us that subtitle. When the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him. Now you Envision him, him, our Lord, who was so compelled on earth because of our sin and the job he had to do to take away that sin to those who were willing to obey. If you love me, keep my commands. If you love me, keep my commands. That's what Jesus said moments before he was crucified, but we didn't. We were taught obedience is not needed. Only faith. These are words of the devil, guys, and his son, Antichrist, Paul. Remember my words. These are going to play out exactly as it is written. Pay rapt attention, please. I beg that from you, please. So, again, let us uh, read 25, 31, 46. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will be sitting on the, His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him. And He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. That's wheat from the tares. Wheat from the tares. What He explained in Matthew uh, before this is not playing out which I read out is now playing out here. Do you see the connection guys? That's why Jesus is a wonderful teacher. He connects the dots for us. It's a, another thing we decided to cherry pick and use only the verses we liked and rejected. Mostly Jesus. Mostly Jesus. That's the very most ironic of things. All the nations will be gathered before him and Jesus will separate the people from one another as shepherd shepherd separates the sheep from the goats he will put the sheep on his right hand these are the wheat and the goats on the left what are these the tares the wheat wheat and the wheat then the king will say to those on his right come you who are blessed by my father look at the words of Jesus I hope Lord please I and my viewers or all of us hear this word from the Lord, but we know it's subject to our obedience. Did we practice righteousness or not? Because he'll tell us that. He'll tell us. He'll reveal that. He'll reveal the criteria. This is very exciting, guys. Very most exciting thing ever. Because it will last one year, ten years, ten thousand years, no, an eternity. So be very careful, apart from making it slightly lighter so you don't take it too heavy. But it is a very serious thing, guys. Nobody can change. We are I'm a tiny servant, the least. Here is the Lord God of the universe talking. Who am I? I can only tell you what he is saying. Then the king will come and say to the, those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by the Father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. He said this was always prepared for you. For these kids who he chose. The 
wheat. These were the sheep. Because they had heard the sound of Jesus' voice and followed him, obeyed. Then he explains why. Why? See, he's a good teacher and a good judge. He's telling us why did he save them. For, because when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. Action, deed, good deed, right? Break it down in your mind and put it here, store in depths of your heart and mind. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me and I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. He gave an answer, a reason. He's a good Lord, a good judge also. Then the righteous will answer. Hold on. Don't do nothing here. Then the righteous will answer. The sheep were called righteous. The wheat were called righteous. Why? Because they had done few things. They were all acts of loving compassion or kindness. Right? Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When did you... We see you as a stranger invited you in or needing clothes and clothed you. When did we see you sick or in the prison and visited you? They had not done anything of this kind to Jesus per se. They had done it to very needy people, sick people, destitute, poverty struck, those helpless people. They had done to them. So they were honest. They said, we didn't do nothing for you when you were telling me we did this and that to you. The king, Jesus will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done for me. Then he will say to ones on the left, this is the end, they are saved. They will now go to his eternal uh, kingdom, kingdom of heaven. And you have now know the criteria, I will not expound on that. You are smarter than me, you can read this. And the more you read, the more you'll understand it's the wheat and tares analogy or the parable or the allegory not playing out. That's Bible for us, the best book in the world. Then Jesus will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed. He says that to the tares slash goats. Why does he say that? Depart from me, you are cursed into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Bad place to go, guys, huh? Not a very nice place to go. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick in the prison and you did not look after me. You did nothing for me when I was facing hard times and harsh times. What did they say? They will also, they also try to defend themselves. This is their last chance anyway. There are, there are no Supreme Courts, higher courts, nothing. This is finito, end, the end, as we see in the movie. Some people stubbornly still sit in the chairs, you know, hoping something else will come. Nothing. Finally, the usher says, get out of my theater. <laughs> out, out, it's over, finished. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see the hungry or thirsty or a stranger needing clothes? See, they called him Lord. Guys, there's a lot here. They recognized Jesus. They knew he is Jesus Christ. Somebody who doesn't know Jesus will have no clue who is he facing, who is this. But these guys knew they were the tares. They were the Paulians who believed but had no acts of loving compassion. Nothing. Because they were taught. You can safely assume because this has been going on. This racket, this heresy for 500 years at least in our churches. Just believe and go to heaven. But these guys ended up in hell. Paulians, if you're listening, who are Paulians, the ones who consider Paul an apostle and mainly follow his teachings in the churches. This is what is your end result. Or all those potential sheep who will end in heaven. If you're not going to obey, you will end up here. And that you includes me. In fact, me first. There's a place where John says, uh, James, beg your pardon, the brother of Jesus, that the teachers will be judged first. I am... Sticking my neck out, my slightly wrinkled neck. I'm 62 guys. I'm getting there. <laughs> they will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you. That's Jesus speaking. Whatever you did not do 
or one of the least of these brothers of mine you did not do for me then they will go the tears the wheat will go into uh, heaven the tears or the wheat will go into the h word then they will go away to eternal punishment but the righteous now the righteous word is being used a second time matthew 2537 matthew 2546 the righteous will go to eternal life so guys it tells you how the wheat and tares which jesus taught played out on the day of judgment i will not go beyond because i have exceeded by 2 3 minutes so in 2 minutes or 1 minute i'll close this thank you for watching the video you now know that it is through actions it was a action based works based deeds based judgment and the good thing is it tells us without blatantly telling us overtly telling us that it was works of loving compassion which jesus will be looking most for to determine who goes to heaven and who does not if you don't have love righteousness see here is the connection i'll give you faith will take you to obedience obedience will take you to works of righteousness and that works of righteousness will take you and turn your heart into heart of loving compassion and all you will think about is doing good for others never harming them never hurting anybody never planning deception never cheating never stealing because love is opposite of sin who says that proverbs 10:12 of solomon reveals that love covers all sin it's like water extinguishes fire of sin that is love it is godly love it is unconditional love it is selfless love when you step out of your comfort zone like these guys and help others who need it we work as a community we work as a team all the children of god without we judging do not judge lest you be judged the measure you use will be measured to you jesus wants us in matthew we cannot we are in no situation to judge we can help but we cannot judge let's leave it to the judge jesus elsewhere it's written vengeance belongs to the lord he shall repay let's keep out of this our job is to practice loving compassion above all our job is to be righteous in everything and this becomes easy when you start practicing as john said righteous is he who practices righteousness there is nothing called imputed righteousness you have seen what happened i will close with this one question will all this change guys for you and me will this scene change i beg you to consider it mull over it reflect on it in your solitude when you are alone in the presence of god be still and know i am god connect with him and ask him lord can you change this he will say no i will not because i am love john this is out a stern warning first john 48 whoever does not learn to love does not know god but god is love there you go these guys had learned to love they were practicing righteousness in the true sense of it loving god loving others and they got is why is this so hard why is this so hard there's another one of john and i will close third time i'm saying second john 16 was always the the commandment of jesus from the beginning of was i'm paraphrasing you walk in love thank you guys god bless you and have a wonderful day